I am outraged by something. Um, this is just my opinion. Um, anybody that knows me know that um, I'm, I try my hardest to be God led, and you know a lot of people are doing things just to be doing it, and they want you know can you help out with this, help out with that? I'm very strategic and try to be sensitive to what God wants me to do with my life, and I believe in the assignments. And God told me there will be um, three stages to where one I'll be loud, two I'll transition over to being quiet, and I mean soft and spoken, and then third I'll be transitioning to be quiet. I don't know if it's about time for me to transition to be quite, I mean, soft-spoken, because on last week, I believe, um, a gentleman shot someone in the food line parking lot. To be more accurate, he shot two people. One person he shot a female, he shot in the chest. The other person he shot in the leg. And I could not believe there was no outrage that this brother received a summons to appear in court and was not arrested and not seen before a magistrate. And I'm saying to myself, how are these things happening? And I called some community activists and I told them about it. And I don't even hear anything about it. And I shared the link with them. I called various people. And um, it is sad because in this situation, it was a black male who shot two white individuals. The um, male who was shot, his chances of being in the Marines, I believe they say is over because of nerve damage and what have you. My point is this, this is why these types of conversations are necessary because other people did start to call me back and it was like, well, you know, it's about time they, they feel what we feel and, and what have you. I'm not concerned about being called names and, oh, you're so pro-white now. I'm pro-right and that's fair R-I-G-H-T. <laughs> and I'm for right and wrong. Amen. And I just find it difficult that I can live in a city and people can discharge a firearm and shoot two individuals and get a citation to show up at court. Something is wrong with that picture. And something is wrong when we don't march because it wasn't a black person that was shot. Because had that been a white male, and had he shot two individuals that were black and did not get arrested, and was not booked, and was not taken a mug shot and all of this stuff, many people will be upset and angry. We have to get beyond color. And we start judging people by their actions and looking at their character, because that's what's more important. So those are two things that has been on my heart and has bothered me. Um, and I just ask for your prayers because, again, I don't understand how that happened. And then lastly, I did invite the chief of police to attend this forum, uh, this chat and chew, not to speak. I would not have did her like that. I didn't think it was fair because I knew we had her on panel. And at a small event like this, many of you all would have took the opportunity to ask her a thousand questions. But I told her to just come sit in the corner, eat, and hear from your citizens, hear what they're saying. And her response to me, not via email, not via through somebody else, but directly to me from her mouth to my ears were, because you are a candidate, I cannot come. Um, many of you all may agree with that, many of you all may not, but this is what I need all of you all to understand. I, as a leader, is trying to get in front of situations. We can't wait for another cop to shoot someone, right or wrong, Amen. before we start having chat and shoes and talking about police and community engagement. Good leaders get in front of situations and bring the people up to speed with what's going on to try to merge the differences. And that is why this is happening. This has nothing to do with me running for mayor. This has everything to do with me being a community leader. And as I've always told all of you all from day one, win or lose come November the 9th, I mean come November the 8th, I will continue to serve the people because I, I love Portsmouth, Virginia. So it, it was very um, disheartening to hear her say that because at the end of the day, she does not just work for Mayor Kenny Wright's regime or the city manager that they handpicked, but they work, she worked for all the citizens of the city of Portsmouth. And in order for us to become a better city, we need to hear and talk to one another. 
so that we can bridge these gaps of racial disparities. Again, thank you all for coming out, and we're going to get this party started, as they say. Welcome to the microphone, uh, Dr. Jackie Walker. Thank you, Barry. Good evening. As we start tonight's chat and shoot, um, each panelist will have two minutes to answer the question. If someone wants to answer the question after someone has already gone, then you have one minute to answer the question. So the first question is more like an introduction and also telling the citizens here who you really are and what you really do in case they don't know you. So the first question is, what is your name and in what capacity do you serve the public? Also, what does police and community engagement mean to you? And we'll start with Hugo. As you've already heard, I'm Reverend Hugo Morrison, Associate Minister of Design, Bethel United Church of Christ. And so I'm a public servant by profession and by calling. Um, public servant in the city of Hampton as the Performing and Creative Arts uh, Director for the Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Services. Uh, what does policing and community engagement mean to me? Uh, it, it pretty much is summed up in its name, um, and I've heard the slogan many times over that we're better together, um, and so that's exactly what it is. It's one working with another to ensure that there, are, there is accountability and equality for all citizens, and obviously policing has to be a part of that, and community engagement has to be a part of that, and we cannot just hide behind slogans, but we have to do the work. Uh, success only comes before work in the dictionary. Good evening, my name is Brian Scannell. I'm uh, the founder of uh, Lone Port Smith on Facebook and a uh, 22-year veteran in the Navy where one of my duties was uh, as an equal opportunity officer. I uh, did that for many years on a volunteer basis in the Navy. Uh, community and policing go hand in hand. Uh, the idea is for all of us to work together to create a productive society that obeys laws and, uh, and follows the rules. And that requires both people who enforce the rules and people who follow the rules. Uh, and without those two things working together, we have conflict, which is what we see a lot of now. Good evening, I'm Terry Danaher, and um, I'm not quite sure why I'm here, Barry, but <laughs> I am. Uh, I am the president of the Old Town Civic League, that might be the reason. Um, I'm on the Citizens uh, Transportation Advisory Board for the region of Hampton Roads. Um, I think uh, my heart is in the farmer's market, which I run as a volunteer, and everybody needs to come down and shop. And, uh, and I think that possibly the no tolls involvement that I had with a lot of people, some of you in this room, um, is probably one of the reasons anybody might know me, because I was very much involved in that and very passionate about it. Um, and, and I still am because of the impact that has on people in this community in terms of the economic realities of it. And uh, I think the other reason uh, that I would, might have something to contribute is we hear a lot about uh, crime in Portsmouth. And I look around at other cities and I see crime in all those cities. And we have this reputation that seems insurmountable for having more crime than anybody else, but it's not a true reputation. So I, I would like to kind of, you know, touch on that problem and, and get a, a better grasp of, of who we are and what we are and, and what we have to offer. Thank you. Hello, my name is Peter Lanatore. I'm a businessman, accountant, entrepreneur, activist. Uh, used to live and work in the city of Portsmouth. Unfortunately, I don't anymore. Um, I still have a passion for Portsmouth and what goes on here. Um, the community relation between the police and, and the community to me is a big thing because that's sometimes the first line of public service that people get to touch or see. You don't see your city manager every day. You don't see your mayor every day, but you usually see your community police. So that's a big thing to me, and that's a that's a big strain that you know a lot of people don't want to talk about, but there is a strain in a lot of communities with police. And I think, you know, that addressing it makes it a little better. We need to get you to move back to Portsmouth. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Elizabeth Simmons. I'm uh, born and raised here. I'm a, an elected member of the Portsmouth City Council. I've been so for 10 of the last 12 years. Um, 
And for me, and that's my community service, I was a community activist more on the business side of the house um, before I was elected, um, still a business person in the city. To me, police and community engagement has a lot to do with proactive policing. And by that, instead of reactive policing. By that, I mean both the police um, being aware of what's going on and being proactive instead of just responding to calls, and we, the citizens, being proactive in other words, let the police know when something's going on wrong and let them know when you know something instead of hiding it and being afraid to say something. Hi everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm born and raised here in Portsmouth, Virginia. My name is Michael Wilkins, but uh, a lot of people also know me uh, as Mike Lee within the community. I'm affiliated with a couple different uh, organizations. Um, as far as the NAACP, Virginia Organizers, the Urban League, just to name a few. And for me, what community engagement means, um, just in itself, it, to me, I feel like that means everybody. Uh, I also believe that it also means that uh, not only do the police uh, police the community, but we must police ourselves as well um, and learn to basically take heed and take care of where we live at. Uh, which is important. If the police are here to protect and serve, I think we as citizens as well should be doing the same thing, not just for uh, the people that look like us, but for everybody. I mean, I, I think it's great that uh, we see here that the panel is inclusive, and that's important, and that's what we got to start and not be afraid to uh, stand together and shake hands. Hello, my name is Robbie Bradshaw. I am a junior at Old Dominion University, uh, majoring in political science and minoring in history with a concentration in African American history. Um, I've served in I, numerous things. I have served as a staff assistant in the uh, General Assembly of Enrichment for the past two years, um, and I'm also a political consultant. Um, I also helped start a organization over in uh, Norfolk called Bridging the Gap 757, which is bringing police and communities together, um, hence the Bridging the Gap part. Um, and so I think basically it's just community engagement is just having police officers in the community actually talk instead of being at a distance from each other like they tend to be now. Hello, my name is Nathan Clark. I was born and raised here in the city of Portsmouth. Uh, attended Portsmouth Public Schools, graduated I.C. Norcom High School. This has been my home and will continue to be my home. I have had about currently 28 years in public service. I'm currently a police officer with the uh, Virginia Marine Police, which Portsmouth falls under my jurisdiction, which we do most of our work on the water. So we patrol the Elizabeth River and anything dealing with the water and tributaries in this area. My prior experience was here in the city of Portsmouth. I did 20 years for the city where I was a police officer and a firefighter. Uh, the community engagement is very important. I, I was involved in a lot of these groups back when the uh, NEAT team started in the early 90s. I was in the traffic unit with the city. <clears throat> Dealing, you know, talking to the communities, you know, somebody lives and they're in their neighborhood 24 hours a day. <clears throat> I'm only there at certain times, so they know much more about what's going on than I could ever know because I'm not there on a daily basis. So it's very, you know, important how we get this information. You know, for example, uh, just one tip of the iceberg. Years ago when, when Ida Barber was here, we had a lot of crime in there. You know, we were responding, and that was one of the first communities that we put our NEAT team in. We had a PRHA officer in that neighborhood. And what we found out was the majority of people in there committing crimes did not live in that neighborhood. They were coming here from other cities to do their deals and the criminal activity that they were up to. And once we started weeding these people out that did not live there and were not residents, we started seeing people come out of their homes and sitting on the porches because they had been scared to come out before. And without you know a, a community relationship with these residents letting us know what was going on and who belonged and who didn't, you know, police cannot do it on their own. They need this type of engagement to direct them what to do and where to put their services. Um, my name is Marcus Baker. Uh, I currently work as a gas clerk at Crowder Middle School, uh, lifetime resident of Portsmouth. I graduated from Portsmouth Public Schools, uh, graduated from TCC, the Portsmouth campus, 
I'm currently a junior in North State pursuing my bachelor's in psychology. And uh, my purpose of being today is I'm a founder of an organization named Man Up, which stands for Mastering the Nurturing Unlimited Potential. It's an up and coming mentorship group for young men. And uh, my point of being is I think that the importance of community and police relations is people that understand that it's, it's not an agreement, it's more like an understanding because laws are already made and people are going to break laws whether we say so or not. So, not so much as people getting on the side of why laws are made or why laws are broken, but understand why both sides and just to make sure that things are handled in a just manner on both ends, that the police get justice and that the victims or suspects or whatever the case may be get justice too. And you know, my main point being is to try to maintain the integrity of the force because I'm from Jeff Wilson, if anybody here know, you know Jeff Wilson, I don't know police officers like the brother here who came in the community who helped. I remember the NEAT teams. I actually remember my mom working with the police officers and helping out in the community. And the police actually being there and volunteering, helping with the kids with sports. So I don't really like the new type of relationship that's going on in the city with police, and I would love to be a part of the current relationship. Thank you.